Tiprochromis are one of my favorite African cichlids in the aquarium hobby. These fish will school around and behave much more like tetras or rainbow fish than African cichlids. These fish do require a little bit of patience, but with their beautiful adult coloration, you will be rewarded. So let's head into the fish barn and learn more about these beautiful and peaceful African cichlids. There are five species of Ciprochromis native to Lake Tanganyika. They're the Leptosoma, the Coloratus, the Microlepidotus, the Pavo, and the Zonatus. I've only kept the Leptosoma, so let's focus on that species. There are numerous geographic locations for Ciprochromis, so you need to make sure that you're keeping fish from different locations separate to avoid unwanted hybrids. You can find the Ciprochromis leptosoma on the eastern side of Lake Tanganyika over a 300 mile range of shoreline, anywhere where there's rocky shore and deep clean water. The Ciprochromis have a slender sardine shaped body with the males reaching a size of about four inches. There are jumbo variants that do get quite a bit larger, topping out at about six inches. The males will come in a wide assortment of colors with the most common color being blue. And more than likely, the males will have either a yellow or white tail. The females and juveniles will be a gray color with maybe a little bit of color on their fins. I currently have a school of Ciprochromis in this 40 gallon breeder that I picked up in Joliet at the Greenwater Aquarium Society from Primetime Aquatics. I also have these jumbo Ciprochromis leptosoma yellowhead and conde that I've had for about a year or so. They're currently living in this 140 gallon Lake Tanganyika community tank. I got these fishes fry and you can definitely see the male starting to color up and get his yellow head. In my opinion, a 40 breeder would be the minimum tank size for a non-jumbo species of Ciprochromis. If you purchase the jumbo variants, I honestly wouldn't put them in anything less than a six foot tank, just to give them adequate swimming space. I would say Ciprochromis are an intermediate level fish. They're not difficult to keep, but you do need to keep your water clean and practice basic husbandry. Being from Lake Tanganyika, they do require a higher pH and hardness level. The pH in the fish tank farm is around eight with a very high hardness. The Ciprochromis will take a wide variety of flake, pellet, frozen, and live foods. But you'll need to keep these foods on the smaller side since all Ciprochromis have small throats. Mine really do like live baby brine shrimp. And also the extreme curl flakes, which I purchased from the aquarium co-op. So let's talk about where to find Ciprochromis. I would highly recommend getting them from a reputable source or from a local breeder in your area within a reasonable driving distance. Ciprochromis are notoriously poor shippers, so I would be sure to vet any online vendor that you purchase from and definitely pay the extra money for overnight shipping. Ciprochromis are fairly pricey with prices ranging from about $10 to $30 per fish. Due to their peaceful nature, Ciprochromis are model citizens in the aquarium and will not bother and harass other tank mates. I would avoid putting them with fish that will either harass them, aggressively compete for food, or become territorial. Some of the species to be avoided are Trophius, Frontosa, since Ciprochromis are a prey item for the Frontosa in the wild. Julitochromis, since they become aggressive once they start breeding. And also rock dwellers like the Neolamprologus burchardi, which do become quite aggressive and are also very prolific breeders. One of the classic setups is to have a Ciprochromis and a shell dweller community tank with a species like the Neolamprologus similis. 
The Cibrochromis would occupy the middle and top levels of the tank, while the Shell Dwellers would occupy the bottom. In my opinion, I would only do this type of setup in a larger 5 to 6 foot tank like a 120 or 125 to ensure all the fish have swimming room and territories of their own. In this 140 gallon tank, I do have them with some Calichromis as well as some rainbow fish. My Cibrochromis have been doing okay with the rainbow fish, but this is not something I would really recommend offhand since they do inhabit the same area of water and would compete for food. Though I've not bred my Cyprochromis, like most African cichlids, they're maternal mouth brooders. Due to the size of their mouths, the brood sizes are much smaller than your typical Mbuna, usually numbering about five to 20 fry. After about four weeks, the female will spit the fry in the rocks, at which point they're not provided parental protection. This is the point where patience comes into play. Cyprochromis are rather slow growers and the males are slow to color up. I've had the yellowhead and condes for just about a year and the dominant male has yet to completely color up. Just look up images of Cyprochromis on the web and you'll realize that they're well worth the wait. This is definitely a fish I'm looking forward to breed and provide to my fellow hobbyists. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at one of my favorite African cichlids in the aquarium hobby. This peaceful fish will make a great addition to your fish room or Lake Tanganyika community setup. So with that being said, stay safe, stay fishy, and I'll see you on the next video.